Oh guys, it's uh, not done a video for a while now. Uh, things have been getting in the way, but um, I've got a bit of time today, so uh, a few updates on the, uh, the Swamp Dog, the Toyon L400 truck. You know, I've been having a lot of trouble with it, um, but I think I've kind of, I've been running it for the last month, uh, every weekend over my flying field, and she's been going really well. Um, the few little upgrades which I've done to it, uh, let's take the body off. Um, okay, you probably see the first thing I've done is I've got um, a set of Mojave wheels on it, uh, which sort of look a lot better on a truck. I had the sort of eighth buggy type wheels on there before. Um, I was a bit dubious if the engine would pull because they're bigger diameter, so it's kind of geared it up a little bit. But it seems fine. Um, got a bit of a wider turning circle, but it's not too bad. That uh, handles really well. So I think the last time I've done a video on this, um, this was a new engine they sent me. Uh, but I think, it, yes, right, it blew a head gasket. Um, it was a very hot day, I had water and everything, but for some reason it blew a head gasket. So, what I did, I put two head gaskets in there together, so we've got two head gaskets. And the other thing that went on it was the rear... I'll turn this around. Was the rear bearing in the back of the engine. Now, that's quite an easy little mod to do because you can, there's a, a bearing retainer which you can take out and you can bore it out for the same size bearing at the front. front. So now you've got front and rear bearings that are they're a lot bigger than they were. Uh, and since I've done this mod and the two head gaskets, it's been kind of going really, really well. Um, it's kind of got a little misfire on one cylinder, which I can't quite work out what that is. But it's, you know, with these four carburetors on here, with these four carbs, you think to yourself, when you get it kind of near enough, you don't want to mess it up again by giving it a little tweak. Now, I've been on Toy's uh, website, or Sterling Kit, and they've got, well, it looks like they're making uh, an inlet manifold for one carburetor, which will be absolutely fantastic, because I think this, I know it looks good and all that, uh, whether it gives it any more power, I don't know, but it's really hard to tune the three carbs you know, there's no way of kind of listening to what he's sucking like used to in the old days with the cars and all that. Um, and I've kind of basically gone with the needles out exactly the same. Um, and when it's cold, it's a little bit rich, but when it gets a bit low on fuel, like it is now, uh, it starts to sing. Um, and it sounds absolutely, you know, wonderful. Uh, the other thing I've done, I've got a, a larger radiator in it. Now this radiator came with the NR200, which I've not actually put in anything yet. Um, with this radiator, and I've put bigger water cooling pipes, I've only ever seen like 65 degrees temperature on here, even quite a warm day, so it's running really nice temperature. Um, I still think the exhaust could be better, because this is a very restrictive pipe. It's off a Mosquito helicopter. Um, but, you know, what I'm sort of using this for at the moment is a, a mobile sort of test bed. And every little bit I do on it, it seems to go really well. It, it handles well. Um, it's got a good turn of speed. Uh, gear change is really nice. Brakes work lovely. The reverse works on it. So, if I can get a few more weeks towards the end of the summer, well, into the autumn maybe, as it is, um, I might change the exhaust. Uh, look for a different body, something like that, a little bit lighter. Because it's a very heavy truck. It's it's probably the engine that's, that's the heaviest. I mean, everything else is alley. And I've tried to make it as light as possible. Uh, I also had trouble with getting belts for the starter as well. Um, I was emailing uh, Mona back and forwards, back and forwards, and kept sending me the wrong belts. But at last, 
um, I've got the right belt for the starter, and I also got the right belt for the um, the FS two hundred, the L two hundred, which I'm not having much luck with, but more on that a little bit later. So these are the the basic mods which I think you must do to these engines. I know people say about the centre bearing as well, which I think it, it, you know that's what you really need. But for me, well, I run it occasionally. The big bearing at the back and a big bearing at the front, I believe it's kind of, it's, and the two head gaskets take some of the compression off the engine. But since I've done that, uh, I've not had a problem. I've not lose, lost any water. Um, she's quite crisp on the throttle. Um, but I'm sure you could get more of that with a, a single manifold because, as I say, there's, there's one cylinder kind of slightly out. It sort of gets to revving at high speed. And a high revs, and then it kind of it sort of flutters on one cylinder, you know, like you can hear it sort of not actually. It's almost like it's four stroke and like it's rich, but which one it is? I mean, you can put your hand on it. It's not like you've got four pipes that one's warmer than the other. But so far, that's kind of where I am with this truck, and uh, the bigger wheels I think suit it. I have got, if you look on that side, on this side, I've got a set of brand new grey ones because these are not cheap, they're like 50 pound, over 50 pound a pair. And on my Mojave on 6 or 8S, over our track, in the summer, we was wearing them out every like two weeks. So it's very expensive. Um, but what we ended up doing was just running on the old warm ones till there was nothing left of them. But I have got another set of grey ones on order. So these won't be bald, they will be like new. Um, so that's a little thing. Also, when doing the starting belt on this, I also made this brushless motor. Uh, it kept playing up. Um, and I think what had happened, um, the two ends kept spinning off. Um, and then I made a new rotor for it. Not a rotor, a new shaft, a rotor shaft to go through the middle. But I made it slightly too short. So it was trying to pull the belt back uh, and it kept playing up. So when I um, had it out and changed the belt, I actually made another hardened shaft for this and made it about 10 mil longer. So it's in an absolute idle place. And if you can see, I put like little screws to hold the end belt and they screw on and I've got little screws with stud lock and that's not been a problem. That's a, a line helicopter motor. Um, I made my own case for it uh, because I forget what happened to the case now. Something happened to it. Um, there were threads stripped in the end. So I've made my own case, screw cut the ends, um, put that in with stud lock, screwed those ends, and I made uh, little screws to go in there. I think they're about two mil. So since I've done that, <coughs> excuse me, since I've done that, this truck, it's been going really well. And I think this radiator is a must on this 400. I think... Might be a bit overkill on the NR200, but on this, there's a lot of heat to get rid of. Now, we'll just change this to my other truck, which I've had for some time now. Oops, one of the batteries just hit me in the head. Okay, now you all know what this is. This is my white Toyota high lift. And this is my FS200, which I've had, or the L, L, FSL200, they call it, which I've had for a long while now, um, and I've not really had any luck with it from the start. Um, when I first started it, um, it always had this preference to run on one cylinder and not the other cylinder. And I've really been fighting that for since I've had it for years, and sometimes I get so fed up of it, I just leave it on the shelf. Um... And then I'll come back to it. Now, at last, I got the right cam belt after um, Sterling kept telling me that it, you know, I've ordered the wrong one. I knew which one fitted it because I counted the teeth. Um, but they sent me a lot of wrong belts. But you know, <laughs> you get to know the way Sterling works now. But in the end, they've sent me the right belts for the starter, and I just hope that they put these on there, you know, the ones they sent me before were too short. Only a tooth, but just too short. And I just hope that they put this on their website, update their website, that this is a Toyon uh, 200B. 
belt, you know, because the ones they've got on there are wrong. Now, this is a Tyan FSL 200 belt. Right, now, I don't know if you remember, I did a vid on this. The last vid I did on this, I actually had all the engine apart and I actually found that the valves were leaking. So I thought, well, that's, that's what's wrong with it. So I managed to lap the valves in uh, for about a day with like, um, it wasn't grinding paste, it was Solvo, uh, like a, an aluminium polish. So I got a perfect ring. And then I put the fluid in there again to see if it was leaking, and it was still leaking. Uh, and it had a perfect ring on the valve seat and on, on the valve itself. It was a really nice clean fit. So I kept doing it and doing it and doing it. Um, and eventually I got quite a good seal on it. But in doing that, um, the valves have come up, so I had to grind uh, a little bit off the top of the shims, or the buckets if you want to call them, so I had to take a little bit off them to get the valve clearances right on the engine, and when I put all the engines together, it had an absolutely really healthy pop on both cylinders. The only thing I was lacking was a timing belt. Now, it's taken me months and months to get a timing belt, and I put the timing belt on, and would you believe it, it will still not run. I have spent like a whole day on this engine trying to get you know, it running. My neighbours must hate me because it's pretty noisy. Um, I've done the timing over and over again on the valves. I've checked the valve clearances. It seems like it's just pouring fuel through and out the exhaust. And you can put a glow on one side, and it'll run, and you, I've taken these off just for starting it, and the glow on the other side, and then one side will go out. And you put the glow, glow on the other side, and it'll start, and then the other one will go out. And if you have two glow plugs, on, or two igniters on there, it'll still go out, they'll both go out all of a sudden. And that's with the actual glow igniters on, like with fully charged. And it's draining the tank like you wouldn't believe. I mean, it's barely like 30 seconds of messing about trying to get it running, and the tank's empty. Um, and I'm completely at a loss now to what is wrong with this engine. Maybe it's got a cracked head or something like that, because I have done all I can. I even made a fuel rail. Can you see this fuel rail? So it gets the right amount of fuel from one pipe, and it goes into here, and it's both dead equal. I measured it. Everything is dead equal with this engine. Um, I've had the carbs off, I've cleaned them out so many times. Um, and like I say, I've had the cam belt on, off, on, off, check the time and it all looks at the run, but this engine just will not run. It's just, it just pumps off out of the carbs, out of the exhaust, and you can change the valve timing, so you think, all right, maybe it's out, change it one tooth either way, it'll still run, but it's just exactly the same. It just will not run, it's just like, pouring fuel straight from the tank, straight out of the exhaust, and it's not firing. So if anyone else has had a problem like this, can they get in touch with me? Or I'm thinking of having a word with Mona and maybe sending it back and see if they can find some way of get this running. Because as, as you see, there's a hell of a lot of work in this truck that I did. You know, uh, it's one of my sort of favourites with the exhaust and everything like that. And I was thinking to put the NR in it, but I want to save that for another build, you know. Uh, this, I would love to get this running, but I can't really, there's nothing else I can do to that engine. I haven't got a clue what is wrong with it. It's got compression, it's got fuel, the cam timing's right, the valve clearance is perfect. So where do I go from there? I haven't, I just don't know. It just will not run. I've tried hot glow plugs, I've tried the proper four strokes. Um, God, that's the thing I was gonna say with my um, L400. I'm running Enya number threes in there, not the four stroke plugs, I'm running Enya number threes. They're quite a hot running plug uh, and you get much more power out of it and better perform, you know, starting and everything with them glow plugs. Um, but like I say, I, I've had, every sort of plug you could think of, you know, and they're not cheap, and it just doesn't make any difference whatsoever. You screw them needles in, you think, oh, the 
globe's going out because it's getting flooded with fuel and you've only got to screw them in a bit and then it won't run. And then you screw them out a bit and it's just pouring through there. It is like there's either something wrong with the cam timing, the cam's not right. Um, I've got no idea. Um, and I've got a bit fed up with messing around a bit. So I might have a worthy moaner tonight in Sterling Kit, uh, which they've been good to me over the last few weeks, um, and see if they'll. I can send this back uh, and they either send me a replacement or can get this engine running for me because I, I've, you know, I've seen other people with them uh, and they run without a problem. So there's something in this engine that's not right. So that's where I am with this one. Now, I've just bought another little engine or Sterling kit. Uh, it's an Eugene M12B, I believe. Um, I'm going to do a video on that later on because... It's an absolutely stunning little engine. It's just a really slow revving engine, and I've seen a video of it in a boat. Um, if if you go on Sterling Kit's um, webpage on Facebook, there's a picture of my little engine running on there, and also um, there's a there's a guy, David, who who's actually put one in a boat, and that's what got me into it because you know, it's not fast. It's just so scale. The way the engine runs is absolutely incredible and you've got a pull start to start it but you can almost flick it with one finger and it'll start so that'll be uh, a video coming up um sterling kit want me to do a video on that which is uh nice but i've also got i bought an old antique boat off of ebay because it deserves to have something kind of really old-fashioned so i bought um an old boat off ebay uh, and that should be on its way soon yeah, so when I get the boat, I'll do a, a video of the boat and this, uh, you know, this slow revving engine, which is absolutely lovely. It's something you can just sit and look at all day, you know, just ticking over. It's got such a slow tick over. Anyway, guys, that's where we are with this one. I'm going to sign off now and uh, keep safe and I'll see you in the future.